Hey guys, welcome back. I'm going to be assembling a uh, Pike Precision 2 F3B model. And there's nothing to do on the wings really because the servos are already installed with the LDS. But I'll go over uh, the fuselage assembly. So not a whole lot to do here either. We have to put the... Uh, the wiring harness in the fuselage and obviously install our servos, hook up the push rods. We're putting a battery in here and a receiver. Um, gonna have to put quite a lot of ballast in those, so that's a little bit of work there. But we'll start with the the wiring harness. So the model comes with pre-made harnesses, which is convenient. And I'm just gonna prep the fuselage and the um, harnesses because we have to glue the harnesses in so what I'm going to do is just kind of prep this area of the fuselage I have a file here and I'm just going to kind of scrape off some of the paint where the plug will get glued in uh, just trying to get a good bond here. You can use a file with like a pointy end. You could probably use a Dremel tool as well with a really small bit if you wanted to, but kind of easy to slip and mess something up so I don't mind just using the file that's really about all you need I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side as well Sandpaper would also work, but it's kind of hard to navigate in this tight space. You could you could try to fold some up and get it in there if you wanted to. Okay, that's looking fine. I'll uh, vacuum this and wipe it with some alcohol before we do any any serious gluing here and I do like to do some prep to the plugs as well so I'll kind of zoom in here and this is basically going to be the mounting area or where, where the glue will make a bond on this lip here so I like to um, do some work there as well and sometimes I'll just take an exacto knife and kind of make some cross hatches and scrapes on this area just give we're just uh, trying to give the glue a little better mechanical bond here that and then on the back side there's kind of a flat here and you can just give this some light scrapes too obviously try to avoid nicking the wires and if you don't do this there's a pretty good chance that these plugs will pop out at some point I've seen plenty of uh, models where that's happened, so, you know, spend a few minutes here and you won't have to worry about it later.
pretty good. And then I'm going to go over that with some coarse sandpaper. Just folded it over a little bit and I'm just going to lightly scuff these areas, especially the corners where I didn't really scrape much. That's all you need. And again after this uh, you could wipe these down with some rubbing alcohol. Kind of degrease them. Get some of the dust off. Okay. okay, we can feed these wires through now, and um, I've put some shrink tubing over the wire. It's not tight. It'll move, and it was big enough that I can get the connectors through. And we're going to use this to um, bond the harness to the side of the fuselage, and that'll just keep the wires out of the way of the joiner. Uh, totally optional step here. So this is the uh, right side and the connectors are marked. You can see the way they bend, right? This would go forward. This side is up. So I'm just going to feed these through. Usually they go in no problem. Um, you can use uh, like a bit of steel wire or something to pull them through. but. Generally, I find they go in okay, and uh, sometimes you have to jiggle them around a little bit, but see that we're, we're already through here. So we'll get that piece of shrink tubing in there, and just keep going. This, and this should sit in here like that. There's no guesswork required here. Uh, they don't jiggle around or anything so we can just glue them right in without you know uh, using the wings or anything like that. So that's fine and I just want to look and uh, I'm gonna might be too early to do this but uh, I'm gonna grab some hemostats here and just pull that bit of shrink tubing kind of under the uh, where the joiner would go. Might have to move it later. So that's great. And now we can go ahead and do the other side as well. And this would apply to so many other models as well, not just the, the precision. Any kind of F3F or F3B or other model with a two-piece wing. through so I'll just give the wires a tug and you can see it sit, seats really well there so we'll do the same thing try to uh, grab that bit of shrink tube There we go. 
we'll mess with those later. Um, for now, we can get these plugs glued in. And you know, normally I would uh, use epoxy, but I'm gonna try something a little different because I wouldn't mind a little bit of like flexibility in this joint here. So I'm actually gonna use gorilla glue. Gorilla glue. Okay, here's the Gorilla Glue, and this stuff says you need to um, dampen the area with a little water. So, I mean, that's fine, whatever. I think I have a, a Q-tip here, and uh, I have some water and a spray bottle. So I just sprayed some on the end. And we'll just pull this out. And just I'll just run this Q-tip or cotton bud or whatever you want to call it in the area, and then I'm gonna use a, like a carbon stick to help me apply it a little neater, and I'm just gonna get some in this area. Don't have to rush with this. Plenty of time, and we can wipe it up with water or alcohol if uh, we have any spillage or seepage or anything like that. And I don't really care if I get some on the wires, honestly. Alright, I think that should be okay, so we'll just set that guy in, and I'm going to keep pressure on it, and I'm going to get a paper towel here, just wipe off some of the excess, and then I'm going to spray some water on the paper towel, just a little bit. Kind of just go around like this. Okay, and masking tape to hold it in place as it cures. Perfect. And now we can do the other side. Same thing with that cotton bud moisture in the area I'll push this guy in. Same thing, wipe the excess off. tape this plug can't really go anywhere so as long as it's fully seated it's going to be in the right spot so that's why I'm holding pressure with my finger and then I'm just kind of get a bigger piece of tape here and just kind of go all the way around 
like that. And we'll just let that cure up or dry or whatever this Gorilla stuff does for, I don't know, at least a couple hours, but we're not going to mess with those plugs again for a while, so it doesn't really matter. So there we go. Now the next thing we're going to do is cut the holes for mounting our servos. And I'm going to be using a KST X12 508s, which are probably the ideal servo for this. Probably actually overkill, honestly, but um, they have uh, quite a lot of torque, and they're pretty pretty speedy servos. So here's a servo here. And I've, I've uh, done several of these fuselages in the past, and I, I like to keep um, the servos kind of as far back as I can. That gives you more room up here for uh, battery and receiver and everything like that. So obviously there's a curve. And I like to mount these so that the, the tab, the back tab, or the end portion of this tab just sits right before that curve starts happening. Kind of like that. So that's kind of where I'm going to set up the servo, the rear servo anyway. And I like to put some tape here. Because I'm going to uh, draw on this. The fuselage, so just put some tape down. You can draw on that. Like this. So I'm going to go ahead and do the layout and mark where I want to cut out for the servos. Marked out the servo locations. Um, I used the clevis and the coupler to kind of help me with this. So if we start with the the back servo, and if we were just to kind of put this where it wants to go here and hold the center of the clevis on the center of the servo, you can see we have a certain amount of gap behind the coupler. Um, we need about uh, maybe 10 or 15 millimeters, you know, for the, the push rod to travel. We don't want it to hit this. We want it to give ourselves some room. So using, using these X12 servos, uh, I came up with some measurements here. So 20 millimeters from where this curve starts to happen. So this is flat, and then here's the curve to this line here which represents basically um, the outer part of the the mounting arm not this part but this outer part so that's 20 millimeters to there and then 32 millimeters and another 32 millimeters which again is basically the dimension from the outer parts of these arms and then I centered the servo cutouts within those dimensions and I'm basically putting them straight down the uh, center line of the fuse. These cutouts here are over slightly oversized about a millimeter so there will be a little bit of wiggle room front to back and side to side so if I need to kind of push the servos to one side or another I can do that. Um, but anyway so got the uh, Location's all marked out, and we can go ahead and start cutting those out, and we'll be using a Dremel tool. I cut out the holes for the servos, and you can see right here there's a little kind of uh, extension, and that's to help clear the grommet on the, the servo case so I can fit the servos in. And there's some masking tape here, and that's actually holding down the wires, the fuselage wires for the for the harness on the sides of the fuselage 
because there's literally zero clearance between the bottom of the servo and the fuselage so if these wires get you know um, underneath the servo you're gonna have a lot of problems so the tape keeps the wires tucked out of the way and we can just peel this tape off and pull it out uh, when we're all done with mounting the servos so this is this is the arrangement basically and uh, push this guy in here it's always tight mounting these these servos but you can generally get it like that okay so there we go they're both in um, this servo here is not quite um, bottoming out on the fuselage this one is there's probably some material or a bump. Uh, I could try to go in there and grind it out, but I've built a few of these before. So I think if I just um, make a little spacer to fill that gap, I could just 3D print something um, that'll take care of that. And I'm, al I'm also going to uh, 3D print a few other items for this just to like make the installation cleaner get the servos in place, just test fitting them, and this front servo sits nice and flush. The back servo is a little proud, so there's a little bit of gap between the mounting tabs and the fuselage floor. And just through experience with these, I kind of know that there might be a little bit of material underneath the servo, some lumps in the layup of the fuselage. So I'm going to try and uh, get that servo to sit flush. So let me go ahead and pull that front servo out. And then I'll pull the back servo out as well. And what I'm going to do is get a paint pen. right here and I'm just gonna just put some some of this on the servo hopefully wherever it's hitting the bottom of the fuselage some of this paint will transfer and we'll be able to see if there's some spots that we need to address. So now I'll try to push this guy back in. So I'll just kind of just force it and try to wiggle around a little bit. And we'll pull it out again. And I can already see, pull these straight, I can already see in here some of the paint. So I'm going to take my Dremel and grind that area a little bit. Just did some grinding in here, kind of hard to see. So anyway, let's just uh, test this out. See if they've got uh, any better of a fit with our servo. Still not quite sitting flush.
let me do this uh, paint pen again. I could shim these servos up a little bit, but the fit is pretty, or the clearance between the servo arms and the crevices and the canopy or the slide on nose cone is pretty tight. So I'd rather get the servo to drop down if I can. So okay, I see a little more, a little more paint. this again might take a few attempts and we definitely made some progress there but it's still not quite flush so I'm just going to go ahead and keep working on this, and when I get a good fit, I'll come back. Everything is well situated with the servos. They're sitting flush on the bottom of the fuselage, and I've um, printed up. Essentially, it's just a giant washer. Um, and what it does is it ties both the servos together and allows me just to use one screw in the middle here to um, anchor the servos down. So it, it basically goes something like this over the servos and we'll just run in some screws there, have to drill those holes. So that's what I'm going to do next and then I'm using these, uh, these are like 2.2 millimeter self-tapping screws to uh, hold everything in place. I've got my holes drilled for the uh, hold down screws and um, what I'm going to do now is just try to get rid of this uh, masking tape so I'm putting pressure on the servos to keep them in place and I'm just gonna pull this tape out and again we're just doing this to keep the wires uh, from getting underneath the servos this one kinda tore but I don't care that tape can can live in there permanently it's not going to hurt anything. That one came out. And then I'll take my big washer I made and just slip that on top there. And 
just get these screws started. Uh, I'll leave um, I'll leave the STL file for this if uh, somebody else wants to uh, wants to use it. That's looking good. I don't have to go crazy tightening these up, just get them snug. And I use the carbon PLA to print this tray. I really like the carbon PLA. It seems to be much stronger than normal PLA. Just gonna go over these and make sure they're tight. And these servos are now securely fastened. And it actually looks like a real neat and a tidy setup. So the next thing we're going to do is prep the uh, servo arms for the push rods and do the clevises and the couplers. So this is the one of the arms that comes with the KST servo and some time ago they changed their molds I guess for these servo arms and made these arms quite a bit thicker and they're too thick for the clevis it'll basically keep the clevis spread apart um, you could try to grind this down <clears throat> if you wanted to but I have found some of the old arms in a drawer you can see the difference in thickness there and these will work perfectly with the clevis so I'm gonna use those and gonna have to drill my own holes on these arms and basically I'm gonna try to keep this clevis as close to the hub or the center as possible because we really need really tiny uh, tiny control arms on this setup so I think I'm going to start with trying to drill those holes. Okay, here's the <clears throat> here's the setup for the clevises. Uh, you can see that I've drilled a hole, and that basically the edge of the clevis is kind of tangent with the with this circular part of the arm and the horn is very short and I've ground with the Dremel an arc in the clevises here you can see that here and this allows travel in that direction like that so this is all prepped and ready to go I've put the couplers on and they're kind of on just halfway so I have adjustment both directions and the next thing we're going to want to do is put the tails on the fuselage. Okay, we've got the tails on and they're taped to hold them in the neutral position. And now we can uh, work on marking our push rods. So you want to make sure that your arms are perpendicular to the center line of the fuselage and I'm just going to take a paint pen and we're going to mark these where we need to cut them so right about there for that guy and then over here, do the same thing. And we don't have to be 
super duper accurate because we do have room in our in our couplers to adjust if we need to so there we go so I'll go ahead and cut those and then see how everything fits like to save the remnants for applying epoxy or whatnot any kind of adhesive so we'll slide that over that one's perfect do the same thing here slide that over And that one looks good too. Okay, there we go. Uh, I might just clip this tube back, maybe like three millimeters, uh, and then I'm gonna <clears throat> do some work on the couplers and the carbon push rods. I'm gonna scuff up the ends of the carbon push rods and file just some very fine notches in them, and then. These uh, couplers, these brass couplers actually have threads inside, so those threads will make a very good mechanical bond. But I'm going to kind of grind down the edges and taper them a little bit. That way I can get some of the um, glue that I use to lap over those slightly and create an even better bond. So I'll do all that. Alright, I got our good friend JB Weld mixed up here. That's what I'm going to use to glue the couplers onto the push rods. I have a bit of that push rod that I clipped off and we have our horns our servo arms and I got a couple pieces of uh, shrink tubing here so let's go ahead and get this uh, attached get some JB weld and we'll put some on the push rod select the right horn or arm and we'll try to get some of this force down into the coupler like so and and we should be able to go ahead and, oops, I forgot one step. We need to put this bit of shrink tubing over the coupler. Should have done that before I put the JB weld on, but oh well. Okay, so we'll get this in place. And it kind of feels like it might want more JB weld, so I'm going to get a little bit more pull this off again and try to get some more in there go get the arm seated and what I like to do here is let me clean some of this off the carbon I like to just lap up some of the JB weld onto the coupler and I've tapered the end of the coupler slightly So this kind of makes a bond inside and outside and then we'll slide the shrink tubing over and we can get that shrunk down a bit later. So let's move on to the next one.
And let me put the uh, shrink tubing on first this time. Okay, and then we need to get some on the carbon push rod. Go ahead and get this guy slid over. Attach it. Seat the servo arm on the servo. Get a little bit more JB weld here. And again, we're going to kind of make a fillet. Try to go. All the way around like that. And let me move the JB weld out of the way. And we can slide the coupler over. About like that should be fine. Maybe a little further up. Okay, and now I'm going to get my heat gun. You could use a soldering iron too. Don't want to keep that heat on too long. But you can see here the JB weld kind of oozing out the back. That's a great sign. And let me just clean that up slightly. And that's looking great, so we'll just go ahead and we're going to let that cure up at least for a few hours. A few more things we need to do to complete the actual um, assembly or build or fabrication. I want to bond the push rods to the fuselage to reduce flex. Let me zoom out a little bit so here and here and we also we also have to go back and tack down those bits of shrink tube over our wires to keep our harness out of the way of the joiner when we assemble the model at the field and I think I'm going to use um, maybe some silicone for these push rods I don't think I want to mix up epoxy so let me think about that for a minute. Alright, so I have the uh, plane basically assembled on the bench and on the CG machine. And this is what I'm getting here. About 2,050 grams. And right now the CG is at 96.5. Um, so I'm happy with that. I have some lead just taped to this, to the cone. And what I'm going to do now is try to uh, get this lead um, kind of situated inside the fuselage. Alright, well battery's in and I put that lead in to get the CG about where I want. Um, hopefully it's slightly 
rearward and I can add a few little pieces of weight as adjustment. But the bulk of the lead is right here. And I have some of the squishy foam padding in the nose and then the battery and uh, got my receiver here and I don't have a Zepsis switch and so until I get one in the meantime I just made up some um, little leads so this guy will hook up to the battery and this guy will go to the receiver and I can plug in and out the XT30s instead of the servo connectors so you don't really want to be pulling servo connectors in and out constantly. They're not really designed for that. So, uh, yeah, six channel JR receiver fits very well right here. Um, this all went together more easily than I remember on the last Precision I built. Um, I remember on the last one I had to kind of grind this opening open more. And uh, I think I, uh, I feel like I had to use more lead, but I'm not, it's been a while, so I don't remember. Um, I, I uh, will route these antennas somehow. The fuse is 2.4 friendly. So let me kind of uh, tackle this and we'll see what we come up with. So the battery I'm using is a lithium ion 2-cell uh, 3500 stick pack. Balance lead and a servo connector with some nice silicone wire. And uh, these are available on my site. And we also sell these uh, transmitter packs. Same battery, just uh, side-by-side -side configuration stick pack uh, really good batteries if you want more detail on the cell types and all that just check out the the link in the description so yeah this is the battery that's uh, in here all right we're basically done here so let me show you what I, how I set this up um, I have two pieces of shrink tube just holding everything in place so the receiver shrunk down you can see I have one antenna here antenna and another one is in the nose pointing forward um, the XT 30s right here and uh, the shrink tubes just holding down some foam padding and some of the wiring so that's all good and the nose slides on just fine even with the shrink tube it actually makes it a slightly tighter fit which I'm totally okay with and then uh, in the uh, fuselage I don't know if you can see this but uh, you see this shrink tubing here? So I've used just one drop of CA to tack that shrink tubing which is over the, uh, the wiring for the wing. So that's just basically holding it against the fuselage on both sides. So there's one here and one on the other side. And that just keeps the wiring away from the, uh, the wing joiner. And then in the back, I've gone ahead and taped up the tails because uh, I'm okay with transporting this with the tails on from my experience with my other F3B, F3F models. I never took the tails off. So I just went ahead and taped that up. And the uh, bottom here, again, we got tape on the tail and I've taped the cone on as well. So we're basically ready to go. I'm going to. Um, Put the wings on and see what the CG comes out to and then uh, program the radio 